Good afternoon, all of you. My name is Srikant, Assistant Professor in Department of PCISL Engineering College. I'm here with, uh, you know, taking the sessions for embedded systems uh, for IT. Now, embedded systems is uh, something like a computer-based system once again. So it is also going to process the digital signal, discrete signals or digital signals. So it is also going to be called as a digital computer system, just like a microprocessor. A microprocessor is also a digital computer system and embedded system is also going to be a digital computer system. So both of them are going to be the digital computer systems. But what is the design? What is the difference between the embedded systems and the microprocessors? So the basic, the generalized difference between the microprocessor and microcontroller is going to be is going to be the microprocessor is going to be is normally meant for general purpose applications and embedded systems are normally meant for the specific applications or specific purpose applications is known as an embedded systems basic utilization or usage so that means here whichever system is normally digital system is normally used for a specific application it performs only a specific task other than which it really cannot do anything else extra it is simply known as an embedded system say an example known as a printer example known as a washing machine so these two are going to perform a specific task it cannot perform something else say for example there is a scanner as a scanner is normally going to perform only a scanning activity so therefore i can simply call them as an embedded system so any system which performs a specific task are a specific group of tasks is simply known as an embedded system. Any system which is given open for any application to implement are known as are known as something like you know general purpose system is known as a microprocessor. So the heart of general purpose system is usually going to be a microprocessor in general, and the heart of the embedded system uh, and the heart of the specific purpose system is going to be called as an embedded system for us. So this is the primary uh, difference between an embedded system and a microprocessor. But both of them, but both of them down the line is going to be a digital computer systems. Both of them are normally manufactured with digital computer, digital computer system with the digital techniques. So whatever digital techniques are normally used in the uh, microprocessor system, same digital techniques are normally used to process the signal in the embedded system as well. Okay, as far as the hardware is concerned, the hardware, both of them hardware is going to be digital computer hardware systems. But as far as the application is concerned, both are really different. So in terms of applications, we, we normally prefer, right? We normally use the uh, systems appropriately. So wherever you wanted to have a specific systems, we go with embedded systems, say something like a remote controller. Remote controller is an embedded system because it is a specific application. Okay, so say something like a temperature monitoring system is also an embedded system, right? And a car monitoring system, embedded system. So like this, wherever you have a specific actions to perform or group of specific tasks to perform, we normally use embedded systems than the microprocessors. Okay, why? Because the only thing is reason is that the microprocessor is used for general purpose and it is going to be costly because the reason being is that it is designed keeping in view to support a uh, mini tasks, whereas embedded system is designed only keeping in view of specific tasks. So thereby, uh, you know, the, as far as the task, as far as the cost is concerned to a particular application, embedded system is going to be cheaper than the microprocessors. So it is totally dependent on the application where we use and applications how we normally going to use so it all based on the application so the differences normally based on the applications as far as the hardware is concerned now our present concern subject is going to be embedded systems so as the name Im indicates embedded embedded means what something is resided in something else is known as embedded that means here we are going to embed both software and hardware in a particular hardware system to perform a specific task is known as basically an embedded system. So people usually say, students usually say that embedded system is a combination of hardware and software. So it is not going to end up by just saying that it is a combination of combination of software and hardware at a particular place to perform a specific task is simply known as an embedded system. 
So if you don't use a specific task, in the case of microprocessor also, we're going to have a hardware as well as software. So it is not an embedded system, in fact. So whereas embedded system is normally going to have a combination of hardware and software to perform a specific task, intended to perform a dedicated task, is known as an embedded system. Okay. So here, in the case of the objectives, we have very simple objectives. Embedded system is a very vast uh, topic. We have, you know, around uh, thousands of uh, microcontrollers, thousands of embedded systems available in the market based on the utilization applications. We use appropriate embedded systems in the real time market. So we have very small objective here. We will be morely, more or less focusing on the 8051 microcontroller as an embedded system. So this 8051 microcontroller can also be called as an embedded system. Why it has to be called as an embedded system and all we discuss in the course. And next, we understand the various applications of these embedded systems using the concepts of interfacing. OK. The next is we familiarize. Next topic is here. Basically, uh, as I mentioned, embedded systems are normally meant to perform a specific task. That means I want to send some uh, data like you know from RFID or from uh, uh, you know temperatures or pressure sensors. So by taking the data from um, uh, various readers, right? I want to process some task and I wanted to give this task to some specific other applications. So it is all something like, you know, all this is combined is normally called as an embedded system. So therefore here, in order to perform, uh, you know, embedded system completely, we need sensor. Therefore, we are going to familiarize with the sensor. What is the sensor and understand various sensor applications. The next is uh, operating system. Now, what type of operating system is normally preferred? In the embedded system, it is going to be ORTOS, real-time operating system known as ORTOS. So here we learn about the basic concepts of ORTOS and the design processes using the ORTOS. So it is simply a basic concept of ORTOS we have in the syllabus. Then we have to familiarize with the design principles of S4C, system on chip architecture. So in a single chip, we are going to embed the entire system. So embed means what? We have to have the uh, you know, hardware, obviously, and the concerned software to run this particular hardware is also resided in the hardware itself. Okay, so that is what basically an embedded system. And if you simply look into the units that we have, the first unit is normally going to cover about the basics of the embedded systems. What is an introduction to the embedded system, such as classification of embedded systems, like small scale embedded system, medium scale embedded system large scale embedded system, all these comes under the classifications. So that means here, next one is computing. How the embedded system is going to compute the various instructions. What is the principle of computing of an embedded system? Then next is complex systems and microprocess, embedded system uh, design process, complex systems. Now there are so many types of digital systems nowadays. The system is going to become, uh, nowadays is going to process the complex data. What is the meaning of comp complex data? So we want to perform, uh, you know, uh, you know, we want to design an AI system, artificial intelligence system, and we want to embed uh, the IoT uh, applications. Okay, Internet of Things has to be, uh, you know, supported by our embedded system. So that means what by by keeping all this in view, when you design any system, the system is obviously going to become a, you know, complex system. So in that context also, whenever we're going to design a complex system, the entire system can be really treated as a uh, embedded system if it is designed to perform a specific task as far as a specific task is concerned or a collection of specific tasks, then it is simply going to be a uh, part of the embedded system. So therefore, the embedded system is, is well, you have to confine our embedded system uh, as a digital system used to perform a specific task or used to perform a group of specific task is simply known as embedded system. Now, whatever may be the complexity involved in processing the signal, right? Let it be any, 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 any amount of complexity doesn't matter. But if it is really confined to performing a specific task, it is simply called as an embedded system for us. So embedded system, uh, the, the embedded system uh, in the inside embedded system, you're going to have a microcontroller, you're going to have microprocessors. Right, a combination of them we're going to use independent, uh, independently with DNA not going to use. So if we use combination of microprocessors and microcontrollers 
and we call that as an embedded system obviously if it if it will be intended that entire system to perform a specific task uh, so in that process we simply call them as a embedded system as well so embedded system is not only going to contain uh, the only the microcontrollers embedded system can have a microprocessor as well right but only confinement for us is that the embedded system should not uh, should should be under the purview under the purview of performing a specific task it should not be a general purpose if it is general purpose obviously it is uh, not going to be called as an embedded system for us okay that means uh, more or less what we can say is uh, automated systems whenever we want to design any automated system you have to go with the embedded processors embedded systems so that is what more or less we are going to have now nowadays everywhere we want the automated systems there is no field in the uh, technology world where there is no embedded systems there is no electronics uh, involved in that why because everywhere everyone want automation to be incorporated in their system let us go to medical field let us go to the chemical engineering field let us go to the you know shopping field let us go to any other field right automobiles everywhere you normally going to see the consumer electronics right uh, and many other fields whatever industries you see everywhere we people really uh, depending on the automated systems so whenever automated system comes into picture obviously the solution is through only by using embedded systems so therefore all of them really put together can be called as an embedded system obviously so embedded system is basically a digital system right used to perform a specific task so therefore this uh, introduction part you going to have then uh, complex systems and microprocessor embedded system design process formalisms and system for system design and what are the various steps for system design what are the differences between microprocessor and microcontrollers and the basic basic microcontroller known as 8051 microcontroller which is a basic microcontroller and we study about this microcontroller in terms of its hardware architecture in terms of io ports in terms of its input output devices right in terms of uh, the embedded counters and timers inside that particular thing serial input and output interrupts which are there inside that particular embedded system so programming using 8051 so next topic next unit is going to be we deal with the programming of 8051 so we always program the 8051 microcontroller to interact with the outside world outside world that means it has to perform various operations like data transfer logical operations uh, you know arithmetic operations decimal arithmetic operations right call jumping instructions all these are operations that a microcontroller can perform and uh, all these part operations can be performed uh, for interfacing with keyboards display units analog to digital converters digital to analog converters serial data transfers whenever i want to transport transmit data to longer distances uh, we always transmit data using a serial communication method so for that you have to compulsorily interface a serial communicate a serial communication port or serial communication device with the micro uh, controller known as 8051 basic micro controller is 8051 and we have other uh, some advanced architectures known as arm architecture advanced risk mission architecture shank architecture processor and memory organizations and various uh, buses which we normally use why we normally use the bus we have address bus we are going to have a data bus so this bus lines are normally used to locate the uh, address of a particular memory chip connected inside that and also uh, you know to transfer the data from one unit to another unit we normally prefer the bus lines and also to transmit the control lines also we going to use the bus lines so we have a popular bus architectures in the case of the uh, you know um, microcontroller or embedded systems called as i square c bus and a can bus now what type of architecture is normally preferred in the case of embedded system design we have two types of basic uh, computer uh, hardware architectures one is going to be the vionuman architecture and other one is going to be the harvard architecture now so that means what harvard architecture in the case of vionuman architecture the data and program instructions are going to reside in the single memory unit in the single memory unit whereas coming to the harvard architecture the data and instruction uh, or program memory will be separate units so thereby by incorporating some pipeline architecture 
right we normally going to increase the speed of operation in the case of the micro controllers or using the harvard architecture so we prefer harvard architecture in the case of the uh, you know embedded system design why because embedded system design is something like a tailoring job on the hardware system tailoring of hardware system is nothing but you know uh, the result is nothing but embedded system when you when you when you, when you do some tailoring on the hardware architecture uh, hardware architecture of a computer system then uh, we normally going to be called that as a harvard architecture so that means what harvard architecture is always going to be a flexible architecture so why it is going to be a flexible architecture we are going to have we can have many program units we can have many data units see once you make it one to many that one to many can be any number of many many units so therefore we can have many number of program units we can have many number of uh, data units only problem is that you should incorporate different pipelining methodologies the number of pipelinings if we really increase by increasing the number of core processes which you are going to use inside the micro you know controller then obviously you normally going to have this kind of a setup over there that means uh, a hardware architecture is normally a preferred architecture to design an embedded system in 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 a nutshell we can say that so the next one you going to have a smash sensors okay so we discuss in deep about the various sensors to sense the information from the outside world into the microcontroller the next one the fourth unit is going to be is going to contain the real time operating system known as rtos so rtos is a real time operating system now uh, why we normally use a real time operating system whenever we want to meet the deadlines in processing the data uh, or in processing the applications in the computer we use the real time operating systems whenever we don't have a you know we don't have the obligation of meeting the deadlines compulsorily then we normally go with a general purpose operating systems which are normally used in our uh, normal pcs like ms dos okay ms windows so ms windows is basically a general purpose operating system right whereas rtos is not a general purpose it is going to be a specific purpose operating system always used to meet the deadlines so that is what the basic difference between uh, you know rtos and a general purpose operating systems like ms windows okay and uh, last unit we normally going to cover the system approach system architecture components of the system like hardware and software what kind of hardware and software components can fit inside the embedded system and various processor architectures memory and addressing methods in the case of the embedded systems so all it is going to be a pure theory on how do we normally going to use an embedded system okay to perform some applications right so various books we going to have to really get some understanding on the embedded systems part so the best book i can suggest is masidi so mohammad ali uh, mohammad ali masidi is a very good book where he is going to explain uh, even the programming also because we have 8051 programming in the unit number 2 programming of 8051 so the programming of 8051 has been really very well uh, explained uh, in the case of the majidi so therefore you can refer majidi for uh, this particular kind of thing and uh, first unit part and uh, some of the theoretical part on the rtos and all uh, we can refer the books known as the uh, <clears throat> there is a book called ramakant you can even refer that and other books also these books also you can refer like uh, uh, wolf book is also there which is normally going to speak on computers and components there is also a very good book and ayala ayala is going to cover the you know little bit uh, part regarding the controllers uh, regarding the counters and timers uh, very nicely explained and uh, rajkamal is going to be one more book it is not mentioned here so you can prefer rajkumar book uh, book also for embedded systems okay so these are the this is what what we normally going to have uh, syllabus of the embedded systems okay now to start with we go with the basics of the embedded system in this session so let us start with the embedded system basic uh, you know concept an embedded system is a digital computer system that has the following components okay now all these components are going to be the part of the single unit called as an embedded system for us coming to the computer system cpu is different the monitor is different keyboard is different okay and uh, other devices 
like speakers and all these are different all these are connected differently uh, with uh, from the micro processor now coming to embedded system all of them are going to reside in the single unit okay that is called embedded system for us so that means many components are going to get embedded in a, at a single place is simply known as a embedded system for us now in doing that we just can able to speak about embedded system is a uh, computer system is a digital computer system that has the following components called as a microprocessor memory units comprising of two kinds like primary memory and secondary memory going to be part of the system as well input uh, units like keyboard mouse scanner etc output units like video monitor printer etc network units like ethernet card front end processor based drivers sensors okay all these things we normally going to have all of them embedded inside the system in the case of the embedded system so when more when more when, when more number of uh, systems are uh, interconnected and working together as a single unit then i can call that unit as a embedded system okay but uh, that should really perform a specific task then i can just simply uh, scale this uh, at a degree of uh, scale this uh, as a embedded system at a degree of 100% right so what we can say is an embedded system has three main components put together so in general an embedded system is going to have three main components one is going to be obviously a hardware it needs to have an hardware so hardware comprises whatever just now we discussed hardware components like you know input device output device primary memory secondary memory processors okay microprocessors networking units that okay, the serial serial com ports parallel com ports all these are the things which are normally going to reside at a one place all of them put together is simply called as a hardware for us shows the hardware uh, there is a figure here 1.1 shows the um, units in the hardware of an embedded system so what are the hardware units that we can really think of see here see in the case of general purpose operating microprocessing unit or a general purpose computer system what are you going to have processor would be separate timers would be separate Inter uh, interrupt control would be separate okay parallel ports would be separate so all of them are going to put on the motherboard okay a motherboard is going to come up like a very big uh, uh, digital system okay the digital system is entirely we usually call that uh, and we simply put that in a single cache called a cpu cache and we normally going to operate that and we call that as a system in general now here in the case of embedded system we simply going to put everything in a single unit to give a designation that it is an embedded system that means inside embedded system what are all these components all these components are simply a digital components digital computer units processor is a computer unit timers computer unit okay interrupt controller digital uh, you know digital system uh, parallel ports serial communication ports program memory and data memory see here program memory and data memory is also a part which is used inside the system and next is obviously power supply unit has to be there system application specific circuits so application software has to be written here in the system specific application circuits io devices interfacing circuits okay and uh, output devices driver devices input device output device driver circuits so all of them are nothing but the hardware units now so all the hardware units are if they are put in a single unit so you see see this this has been put in a single box therefore i simply call this entire system as an embedded system if it is performing a specific task or some group of specific tasks okay is known as an embedded system for us so this is what one of the thing which you going to have as far as hardware is concerned then uh, next one is application software it is going to have the main application software now what is the job of application software it is something like os what is the job of os operating system like microsoft windows operating system so its job is to monitor the uh, or manage the operations of the entire units in the computer similarly here also you going to have the main application software so here the application software is going to perform other many other ta many tasks other than the general purpose operating system application software like microsoft windows so the application software may perform concurrently the series of tasks and multiple tasks 
so the application software is normally going to perform the concurrent tasks the next one is it has a real time operating system the os is going to be real time operating system so something like you know in the case of general purpose operating systems so we have application software like uh, microsoft word microsoft office microsoft excel microsoft powerpoint okay so all these are application softwares that means uh, so say java applications the jotnet applications so all these are something like you know application softwares so we normally going to install the application software and run the application software and uh, this application software is normally going to run on the uh, your operating systems so general purpose operating system so windows 95 windows 8 windows 7 all these are what now they are, this is nothing but a general purpose operating system which we are using continuously on our pcs so it has a real time operating system but not a general purpose operating system so it has a real time operating system that uh, supervises the application software and provides a mechanism to let the processor run a process as per scheduling and do the context switching between the various processes see what is the main job of an autos autos should perform scheduling so inside the microcontroller inside the microcontroller you going to have parallel processing you going to have the pipelining so both of these tasks has to be scheduled properly to perform the task effectively so therefore scheduling has to be done by the operating system context switching has to be done by the operating system so these two are the primary jobs of an autos which is known as real time operating system now what is the difference between the real time autos and general purpose ordinary uh, operating system as i tell you the the autos is normally intended to perform uh, the time specific applications time specific operations okay that is nothing but context switching scheduling is based on latency so the latency is the one which is normally brought in in the, in understanding about the autos systems uh, whereas where uh, the deadlines meeting of deadlines is going to be the primary task of the real time operating systems coming to the general purpose operating system it need not meet the deadlines even if it misses the deadlines no problem nothing is going to happen the system is normally going to be a useful system whereas in the case of embedded systems if the embedded system is not meeting deadlines then it is not at all called as an embedded system say for example lift operating system is there so in lift we have to use an embedded system so what is the meaning of if you use really embedded system it is really performing very well the embedded system should not stop in between uh, it should meet the deadlines so if it already is going to meet the deadlines then uh, the system is going to become more intelligent so meeting deadlines means what it is going we are making the system more intelligent that means ai systems is going to be part of definitely an embedded systems nowadays so embedded system is a wide area now because of 5g technology because of artificial intelligence because of iot technology all these things so embedded system has become a very wide uh, a widespread kind of area here okay so all of them put together okay all these concepts we normally put in the embedded systems as well it will take every specific task every specific application into it so therefore autos defines the way the system works obviously operating system has to define the way the system is going to work that is known as an operating system so it organizes access to a resource in sequence of the series of tasks of the system that's what scheduling so it schedules their working and execution by following a plan to control the latencies this is what i was talking to you latencies and to meet the deadlines so the autos is designed to meet the deadlines that is the main difference meeting deadlines by using latency periods okay latency time period latency intervals okay is the basic task of the autos so that is the primary difference between autos and the general purpose operating systems as well so it says the rules during the execution of application software so while the while the application software is going to execute uh, the autos is going to set the rules and how how it is going to get executed so whenever we want to design a small uh, scale embedded system we normally going to prefer the autos applications okay so many people has given many definitions of the embedded systems 
So Annie Wolf has defined embedded computer system as something like it is a device that includes a programmable computer, but is not itself intended to be a general purpose computer. Okay, many people because many many uh, you know definitions can fit into embedded system as I was talking to you just now. So embedded systems are electronic systems that contain a microprocessor or microcontroller, but do not uh, think of them as computers. The computer is hidden or embedded inside the system. So microcontroller is not a computer. Uh, somebody has said it is not a computer. Somebody has said that it is. So whatever it is, but embedded system difference with respect to general purpose is going to be only one. Embedded system is intended to perform a specific task, whereas general purpose is not for a specific task. That is the body line for all the embedded system applications. Okay. So this is what the basic uh, embedded system which we have, basic thing which we have, right? So. Uh, what is an embedded system? Finally, what how can we conclude about embedded system? Embedded system is a system which contains which contains all the all the hardware units required to perform a specific task. Okay, in a single unit is known as an embedded system, right? So it contains both hardware as well as software required to perform a specific task is simply known as embedded system. So an embedded system is known as a digital computer system uh, which contains both hardware and software embedded into it to perform a specific task is known as embedded system. So this is what the basic concepts of the embedded system which we have. In the next session, we just go with uh, once again basics and we speak something regarding the classification of the embedded systems. Okay, then we move on to embedded computing. Thank you very much for the today's session.